Hello, I'm Gun, and here are 5 Lore Master Tips. Number 1. Defensive Debuffs The LM has a couple of really strong defensive debuffs, and your tank and your fellowship members will love you for it, if you keep those up. Let's have a look at the main ones, the really important ones. So your core defensive debuffs are Fire Lore, Frost Lore, Air Lore, Improves Sino Power Command, and you also have Sino Power C All Ends. Fire Lore is pretty simple, debuffs the melee damage, physical damage of the enemy, 45 second duration. Frost Lore is the opposite, debuffs the tactical damage, same duration. Once you apply these skills to the target, you won't have to use them during the fight because you're gonna use Wind Lore to refresh these buffs. So make sure to refresh with Windlore, using Windlore on the target, before these buffs run out. Keep in mind that not all targets need Fire Lore, not all targets need Frost Lore, but it's not a bad thing getting to the habit of just putting both on. Air Lore is a skill that you put on an ally. I can demonstrate with my pet. Use Air Lore, it's gonna be on my pet. You typically put Air Lore on the target who's gonna take the most damage. And most of the times, this will be your main tank. On any damage, my pet now has 5% chance to negate 15% damage. And it reflects 32% of the damage that is dealt to it. You also have improved sign of power command. You put it on your enemies. It's an AoE attack, which decreases their parry rating and their attack duration. The important thing to notice here is that 30% attack duration debuff lasts for 10 seconds before it's replaced by the lesser version that lasts for over a minute. As you can see, 30% to 15% is a pretty big difference. So I would advise any LM to get into the habit of using this skill every 10 seconds. Keep this 30% duration up. So that's a really powerful debuff. You also have Sino Power See All Ends. It's a critical rating debuff that you put on an enemy, which pretty much decreases their chance to crit. It helps a little bit. It's a long cooldown every minute, so it's a skill you can use every minute. If for some reason you need to put Fire Lore and Frost Lore on multiple targets, like in a normal trash pool, what you can do is put Fire Lore on a target and then Wind Lore. It's going to spread to all nearby targets. Same with Frost Lore, it's going to spread. But the best way to apply Fire Lore and Frost Lore during a trash pull, multiple targets, is to use the skill called the Ancient Master. Fire Lore and Frost Lore affect up to 6 enemies, but if you trade for all the set bonuses in yellow, it's going to be 10 targets. So when you pop this skill, so 1 minute 30 second cooldown. These skills are 10 targets with a 7 meter radius. So it's easy to apply Fire Lore and Frost Lore to all the mobs when the tank goes in. You can see it's 25 second duration. So you just pop this before a fight. Use Fire Lore, Frost Lore on the enemies. And then you can continue using Wind Lore to just spread it and keep it up. Defensive debuff should pretty much always come first. You would Air Lore your tank. Before combat, you can use C all ends. It's not going to put you in combat. You can put that on your target. Increases crit rating. You can also use Sign of Power Command. Not get into combat. And of course, when you start a fight, you would use Fire Lore, Frost Lore. You keep Sign of Power every 10 seconds. And C all ends when it comes off cooldown. And as you can see, if I try to refresh Fire Lore with Fire Lore skill, it's not going to refresh. But if I use Wind Lore, to refresh. Both Fire Lore and Frost Lore are refreshed. That's pretty much all you do. Every 10 seconds or so, you try to use Command. Refresh Fire Lore and Frost Lore before they wear out with Wind Lore and use CO lens when it comes up cooldown.
So if you're able to keep all of this going, it's going to be a lot easier to survive for your fellowship. Number two, offensive debuffs. The LM also has a couple of really strong offensive debuffs, which consists of pet debuffs, which I will have a look at later. We also have Wind Lore, Ancient Craft, Sticky Tar, Warding Knowledge, and there's Knowledge of the Lore Master. Knowledge of the Lore Master is a skill you use to like, inspect your enemy to see their resistance to stuff. If you use this skill right before the fight starts, this debuff right here will be put on the enemy, which decreases their resistance a little bit to damage. Every little bit helps, so this should always be used before combat. You're not going to get into combat using this skill. So if possible, you use this on a boss every time you, before you start a fight. Windlore is a skill that you use to refresh Fire Lore and Frost Lore, but it also gives a, like a small offensive debuff of plus one incoming damage on the target. And it's also AoE, so it can affect three targets. <laughs> it's only a 10 second duration. But the cooldown is 5 seconds, so it is possible to keep this up all the time. And it also tears up. If you use it before it expires, you can tear it up 3 times. Tier 1 has plus 1, you get plus 2, and plus 3. If you're able to keep this up all the time during the fight, that's going to be plus 3% incoming damage on the target for the entire fight. It's not easy, because LM has a lot of stuff to do to keep this up, but but if you can manage it, it's worth doing. Probably the most powerful skill for LM is Ancient Craft, which is uh, armor value debuff on the target. And this also has the 10 second window, where it's really powerful. When it expires, the rest of the 35 seconds, it's going to be a, lit a bit less powerful, but it's still really strong. So if you combine this skill with all your other offensive debuffs, with Captain's Oathies, it has a really big impact on your DPS. It's a 45 second duration in total, 1 minute cooldown. So try to use this every time it's off cooldown. The guitar and Warning Knowledge are pretty much two placeable debuffs you place on the ground. The guitar decreases the movement, but most importantly it decreases the fire mitigation of the enemy. Warding Knowledge increases incoming tactical damage. And it also gives a missed chance to the enemy. And Stick Guitar is going to help Hunters, RKs, anyone with fire damage. Let's take a look at the offensive debuffs. I put Windlore on my target, tier 1. It's off cooldown, I use it again. It's tier 2. When it comes off cooldown, use it again. Tier 3. It's the highest you can get it to. It's a really short window, you can see 3 seconds left, you have to use it. So probably you'll be busy doing a lot of other stuff during the fight. You have Ancient Craft, you put on the target. Give some lightning bonus, but also the armor value, 10 seconds. Then you get the 35 second duration of the lesser effect. We also have Sticky Tar, the fire mitigation. When you use it, it places it on the ground in front of you. You can see this big square. As long as the enemy is within that square, you can see the circle is, is barely inside that square. It still has the debuff. And there's also Warding Knowledge. It also has like a square. You can see where the enemy needs to be. Plus 10% incoming tactical damage. Your RKs will love you for these two debuffs. Keep them up as often as possible. There's also, of course, Knowledge of the Lore Master, which you would use before combat, along with your other auto combat debuffs. So you would just use target, put it on, it's gonna do the inspect thing. But it also puts a small debuff on the boss. Mastering all these offensive and defensive debuffs 
will make your group love you and send you a thousand gold for each run. Number three, pet debuffs. The LM pets are also really important in debuffing the enemy, especially for offensive debuffs. We're mainly going to look at the Raven, Bog Lurker, the Bear, and also the Spirit Pet. Before I go into the pets, there's a couple of tips that will help you control your pets. Free your number one slot and type this in your chat. Press enter, it'll create a shortcut for pet release. What this does? It creates a super fast way to release your pet. You summon your pet. Instead of right clicking and dismissing, you just click this. Pet is gone. So going through your pets real quick, you can do this. And it's really fast. It's dismiss. I'm gonna next dismiss. Another shortcut that will help you controlling your pet is having a shortcut for attack. Once again, you clear your shortcut. Make pet attack. It's gonna make another neat shortcut. Summon your pet. You pretty much just click this, it'll go attack your enemy. Normally I have my pet on passive mode. Sometimes I like to have toggle assist enabled. When you use certain skills like wind lore, ancient craft, burning embers, the pet is gonna attack and use its the skills, if you have them queued, you're gonna use them. But it's also really easy just to tell them to attack like this. If you don't even do that toggle thing. For my bug lurker, I make this skill. I right click it, have it queued to be used automatically. It gives the incoming ranged critical chance. Really helpful for hunters. For my bear. I have Shatter Arms automatically being used when I attack. Incoming melee and ranged, help over hunters, champions, wardens. And then you have your Raven. I don't have anything automatically used. The reasoning behind this is I want to use Benediction of the Raven when I'm ready for it. So what you do, you trade into blue, get a skill called Cat Mint, which buffs uh, Pets attacks. Every time you use it, it's a 45 second cooldown. Most of the time, pretty much all the time, you want to use Cat Mint combined with the boosted Benediction of the Raven. So if you use Cat Mint, Benediction is going to be 20% instead of 10. So as you can see, Cat Mint has a 12 second duration for its buffs. Every time it's up, you're going to use Cat Mint and then use Benediction then start using your other pets. There's also the spirit pet. I have all of these queued if I'm using it. I pretty much only use this if we're not DPSing, just chilling, waiting for people to ult. Puts like uh, some heals, kind of a revealing mark. The only time I would use Catmint is with Benediction or the only other time is using Bursting Root to get a CJ. It's going to be 40% chance with Catmint. You can use Benediction of the Raven without getting into combat. So before a fight, if you want to do that, you could just use Catmint, Benediction on a target. Raven's going to put Benediction, dismiss the pet, get the Bog Lurker out, be ready to put the ranged crit chance. So a normal pet rotation would be Catmint, Benediction, I will dismiss, bring out my Bug Lurker, tell him to attack, I'm gonna use Root Strike, Bear, tell him to attack, it's gonna use Shatter Arms. So you see all these powerful extra debuffs are on the boss, and the ranged crit chance, Shatter Arms, 30 second duration, Benediction is 1 minute. So during the fight, you want to refresh these buffs. Resummon Bog Lurker. And you can see this skill is 30 second cooldown, but if you resummon, it's going to be off cooldown. 
you can keep the pet buffs up 100% of the time by doing this. And there's, of course, also the spirit pet. Gives you this uh, minor revealing mark. A couple of other nice skills your pets can use. The bear can use the forest hunt. Pretty long cooldown, but you can do the same thing. Resummon. Forest hunt again. If you're in a pressing situation, that can help a bit. And there's also the CJ chance from the Bugdarker. But yeah, LM has a lot of stuff to do. If you keep your pet buffs, all your offensive buffs, offensive debuffs, if you, if you manage to do everything, keep it up like 100% uptime, you're gonna feel it in your fellowship. It's gonna have a really big impact. Number 4. Bane Flare and Fire Lore Swappy. As an LM, you could get a 3rd age book couple of nice legacies you can have for a swap out. There's the Bane Flare targets. Bane Flare is 5 targets, 10 meter radius. It does a 15 second stun, which is unbreakable for 7 seconds. But if you quickly swap to this before using Bane Flare, it's going to be 10 targets. It's super helpful. You have a lot of trash mobs. Just pop a Bane Flare and stun everything around you. 10 targets. You're really strong. And you just switch back to your main book. There's also the Fire Lore debuff strength. If you want to deal with that. So if you use it and put Fire Lore, it's going to be 40% instead of 35. But if you switch back to your old book and try to refresh with Wind Lore, it's not going to refresh. So it's a bit tedious. If you want to do this, you have to go to the third age book and then refresh. It's going to refresh and then go back. So it's a lot of swapping, but if you only have one boss, it might be worth get that extra decreased damage. You can get into the habit of doing that. It's really helpful. Another 5%. And number 5. Debuffs pre-battle. Touched on it briefly before, there's a couple of skills that you can use before combat. Consists of Benediction, the Raven, there's Sign of Power Command, Sign of Power Seal Lens, and Knowledge of the Lore Master. This buff should be put before a fight. Gives you a little bit of boost in the beginning. That's the end of the video. Hopefully it helped. Shout out to Arcade Dude for giving me a few pointers. I am now better than him at Loremaster. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment if you have something to comment on. And subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.